sometimes thank you for that so uh <laughs> there's that recording uh sometimes you'll shift in response to a falling market other times you'll shift to take your business to the next level and either way it's going to transform your business and life um you can change your thinking your focus your actions and ultimately your results to get back in the game and ahead of the competition so the tactics that jump start your business in tough times will power it forward in the good times Right, and there's that page and shift where it talks about taking market share. If you keep market share, you keep the your deals the same as the market kind of drops, and then it takes off again, and, and you're gonna keep that same market share, but your business is gonna go up. And we were just talking a second ago, a few of us were mentioning how this shift is gonna be very, very different than 2008, 2010, and I'm excited to talk about that. And so um, let's get into it, okay? Um, so first, Gene, I'd actually like to start with you. Um, with what you learned by going through what we'll call the big shift, right, back in 2008 and growing your business 100% each year from 2008 to 2012, what advice would you share with us today on how to thrive in a trying market? Uh, so I would say, you know, as you did, you know, I took bold in 2009 also, right? And so uh, that was the first time that I actually learned to lead generate. I uh, always thought I was lead generating before when I was showing up to the office, checking emails, making some calls responding to stuff. Uh, but I, I was never purposeful in making those, you know, those contacts. And so, um, you know, three things happened at the same time in, in, that allowed us to grow a business like that through the shift. And that was, uh, one was taking bold and, and making those hundred contacts a week. And it was just, uh, you know, making a contact sport at that point. Uh, second was I went to weekly coaching. Uh, so I had accountability every week versus before I was doing every two weeks. Uh, and that I'm a, I could BS myself with a coach pretty well. If I meet with them every two weeks about what happened or didn't happen or can't quite remember or whatever, but weekly was really hard to get away from the accountability of, of, uh, you know, what I needed to do to grow. And then third was I hired a, um, administ administrative assistant who had D I had never had mm. D in that position before. And so she was, uh, on my coaching calls. And she locked me in the room and she did not let me out and she didn't let me bullshit. And if I did, she told my coach and he found ways to make sure that um, I got back on track. So those three things together just allowed me to have enough conversations, increase my skill set uh, and mindset in a way that allowed me to grow the business through a shifting. Curve. Now, I appreciate I appreciate that conciseness, Gene, of those three things that you said. And I'm going to run through those real quick for everybody. Uh, you hired an admin who had D. Now, D is that drive, right? A lot of right. us think of an admin as uh, on the disc personality as an SC, somebody who's a supporter, more detail oriented. But you had somebody that was a driver that was going to keep you in shape whip you into shape and say, uh, Gene, what are you doing? Uh, yeah. You need to be in this coaching call. You need to be lead generating because I, I would assume that they would have known that their livelihood depended upon you being in that seat, right? Absolutely. <laughs> so and that's where she I, actually came. She came from another agent who wasn't making the shift. Uh, was very concerned about being able to keep her on. Oh wow! And so mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was definitely top of mind for her. And that's that's an interesting. You know, that's some of the, some of the things that we've been talking about in our coaching calls is that the opportunity this presents right now, not only from a recruiting standpoint, right? Agents, we know agents out there that haven't done much business this year because you know they can't get a buyer under contract, and of course that's changing. Yet from an admin standpoint, right? You know that there are businesses out there that have talented admins that might be seeing the same thing that yours did at that time. Now, the other thing you did is you upped coaching, which is interesting because in a shift, right, especially 2008, the sky was falling. It yeah. was, it was, a, it, it could have been a very scary time um, for those of us that might've known better. However, you actually, you know, increased your spend on coaching and uh, upped it to every week because you knew you couldn't hide. You knew at the end of the day, what I heard you say is that it was going to benefit you and it was going to bring a return on that. Is that right? Absolutely. I mean, I, you know, we all have our own um, natural willpower and our ceilings that we get through and or don't get through. And then we also have our own um, self-sabotage. And so oh, yeah. that you don't even know is there. And so the coach, my coach, it was Tony DeSello at that time. He was really able to pick out my self-sabotage talk and go and, mm. and he uh, he would not let me go there. And, and I didn't even know it. And but then I can see look back and see the patterns. And I'm like, Oh, yeah. Yep. I'm definitely limiting myself by what the way I'm thinking and why I'm justifying things. Yeah, that's awesome. 
he helped you be more self-aware and that's something Gary's been talking about in his top agent group about being self-aware and that space between your reaction and stimulus. It's like, Hey, there's something going on here. Let me be aware of the talk that's happening in my head. Um, and then the last thing you said is, is a hundred contacts a week quickly. I'm just curious, like how hard was that to go from what you were doing before, which is entrepreneurial um, lead generation to purposeful lead generation. I don't know how many contacts you were doing before, probably nowhere near that to a hundred, like, what Maybe was that like? What what shifted in your head uh, to get to that level? Uh, so again, uh, he made me commit to one hour of lead generation a week, a day, one hour, <laughs> just one hour, just do this. And then he got me to an hour and a half, and then he got me to two hours, and then he got me to two and a half hours, and he got to me to three hours. And so, and and by the way, two hours is really good for me. Two and a half sucked. Three was horrible. Uh, in my performance. And so I found that I could be really, really effective in two hours of solid, just nailing it with conversations with people. Uh, everybody's different. And so uh, anyway, it, it was, he, he did, I just he didn't just throw it in there, go start doing this. It was, I trained my brain, trained myself, trained my uh, uh, confidence to grow, you know, into a longer time frame. You, you, what you did is you built a habit. Yeah. Right. So, so you, you didn't, and you didn't, um, you didn't set yourself up to fail. You like, what can I do? Right. And let me turn the dimmer up on that so that I don't, you know, all of a sudden, like a lot of people do, I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to go seven days a week for two hours a day. And then they're there for a day or two and then they, they, they fail, you know, and they, they slough off. But you, what I heard you say is that you started with something, built that confidence and, and step at a time. It's like, all right, I'm going to do more. I'm going to do more once you've got that under your belt. Um, which is brilliant because that's, you know, whether it's the one thing or James uh, clear atomic habits, that's how you build a habit, right? Our, our, we don't determine our futures. We determine our habits and then our habits determine our futures. And, and most of us, especially if you read James clear, um, you know, he talks about, you know, do whatever it is, you know, you can do on your worst day, start there and then ramp it up, um, which I think is, is fantastic. Um, anything else you want to add to that before I move on to Mary Ellen? I'm good. Thanks. Okay, cool. Thanks for sharing that. Mary Ellen, you mentioned that during uh, 2000, 2000, uh, 2007, 2008, you were doubling down on lead generation to find the motivated. However, what did you do to motivate yourself to do this? So um, motivation, I mean, we, it go, all goes back to the energy plan, right? We get up and we do our activities in the morning. We get everything done. We're up. We're out and about like now, um, since 2020, I've been on the pivot shift call every single morning, awesome. which is an awesome call that motivates it you. Is. Jane Shaw motivates you. Um, it's, it's incredible. So just getting your mindset in, in intact and doubling down. So like we were, you know, I was contacting 40 people a day. I had to find the motivated and I had to find those people. Most of my business is referral business. It's sphere of influence and agent to agent referral. And when the market shifted, it, that wasn't there as much. So I had to go find the motivated. So I had to find the people that needed my assistant and needed my help. Okay. And, and so what, I'm sure every day wasn't like you woke up and you're like, no. woohoo, I get to go do this. This is wonderful. This is awesome. Right. What, what drove you on those days when you got out of bed and it wasn't the best day and you're like, I don't know, I don't know. Like, what was it that really helped you to, to stay in the zone with that? Was Your it just big why? Like, I mean, my okay. big why, you know, what, what I want to do with my life, how I want to build wealth for other people, how I'm compassionate about doing that. So right. deep down was like, you know, if I don't do this, I wake up every morning, we're all unemployed every morning. We know that, right? We've got to find business every single day. So I was just motivated to find that one piece of business today. And that's what I'm doing right. now in the market now. Okay. So permit me to, 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 to be a coach and, and dig sure. on this for a second. Um, sure. You know, uh, a lot of folks um, have, you know, they, they might kind of know what their big why is. And even if they know it, um, there's that ability to connect our head to our heart and make sure that it actually turns into emotion. Logic makes us think emotion makes us act. Right. So right. how did you keep that emotion tied to that big why during those hard times? Do you have a vision board? Was there a saying, like, how did you keep it front and center and keep your heart in it? 
So I always had a vision board. Every year I had a vision board. And in those days we had the court, the cardboard one with all the stuff on it. So I always had my vision board there and what, um, what was driving me to, to make the money, to fund the perfect life, to lead, lead that life by design is what I looked at every day. And, you know, really just waking up and seeing my family was what was really important to me at that time. Mm -hmm. So you, you kept the vision board, you kept that visual in front of you. Um, you know, I would assume that it was either in one place where you would lead generate or something like that. And, and would you have any any advice to those folks that are like, yeah, I'm, I'm struggling to keep in touch with my big why? Like, what advice would you give them to make sure that their heart stays in it? So um, for me, it's, you know, exercising your your mind and your body. So every morning I would be up running and exercising, starting my day off, whether it's journaling or whatever makes you happy. And I would always motivate my mor my mornings with running. Um, I, I ran division one track in college and I played soccer. So for me, exercise is really important. So getting up earlier in the morning, even if it was a half an hour earlier to just get my stress out of that yeah. and just get my mind in the right, in the right point. You bring up, I'm so glad you said that you bring up such an incredibly important point. And, you know, obviously Gary writes about it. It's in the MREA, you know, the energy plan. A lot of us tend to forget about that. And as we head towards, you know, so, I know some markets are already deep in a shift. Some are starting to see it. And, and the point that you bring up is, is taking care of our, ourselves, our health and our body, right? Emotion creates emotion. So, you know, for those of us listening, like, how is that? How is your energy plan? How are you doing with exercise? How are you doing with nutrition? You know, don't call it a diet because we all have a diet. It's nutrition, right? How are we doing with sleep? How are we doing with mindfulness, right? And, and those practices that we have, because like, like you said, Mary Ellen, it, like that's essential. Like if we don't have those things every day to make sure that we're keeping those things strong, you know, oh my gosh, it's, it's going to be, you're going to be playing behind the eighth ball and it's going to be a lot more difficult for you to, to nail that. Um, would anybody else like to share, uh, basically uh, to add on to what Jean Mary, Mary Ellen have, have said? Rock solid advice. <laughs> Thanks, John. I Anybody? Go ahead. I like to go deep. <laughs> there you go. I love it. <laughs> um, I will say I'll jump in here because I was a new agent. I'm Kristen Smith. I'm from Albany, Oregon. Hey, and you probably have never heard of Albany, Oregon. It's located about an hour and a half or so south of Portland. Um, but I was a brand new agent. I got my license in April of 07. And so when Olivia asked, you know, who, who did this, who's interested, I was like, sure. I, I'm hoping that I can speak to some of the, um, the people who are newer and they don't know, because when, when I started, I had to really dip into the hustle. I mean, I, I had to reach out to who I knew and who knew me. And uh, there was a lot of praying going on, let me tell you. <laughs> and so the hustle technology, one of the things I, I made it as soon as I was financially able to make it happen, I definitely plugged into all the KW things. I think Mega Camp was the very first corporate event I went to. And that I think it was either eight or nine best event ever. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so valuable. So plugging into those kinds of things mm. were the thing that I needed mm -hmm. to get me amped, to yeah. encourage me because it's so easy to get discouraged in yeah. a shift. If you, especially when you're new, um, we, I remember to this day, I remember sitting on the floor in my cubicle in our little office and being in tears because mm -hmm. I had sellers angry at me. I had paperwork on the floor for all these files and I was new enough that I didn't, I didn't have it together. Yeah. And, um, I, one of the other agents that had been around came beside me and she really, she gave me some encouragement and she's like, why don't you let me work, uh, do your transaction coordinating for you? And I'm like, that's a thing. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> having, starting and getting somebody to help you with the things that you're not so great at, mm -hmm. that took that pressure of what do I do? Yeah 
how do I make this successful? It didn't help with the calling the sellers and saying, hey, Mr. Seller, I am glad to reach out to you today. I have nothing new to tell you. <laughs> but though those were the important calls though. And even though I didn't do them as often as I should have as a young agent, because they were hard, they were so critical because if you can keep your sellers informed or your clients informed if it's buyers just let them know let them know you don't have anything to tell them because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all they want to know is that they're that you know they're still alive and that mm -hmm. you're still thinking about them mm -hmm. so you know, my top three things were the hustle bold, going to bold mitch was one of my bold coaches and and technology just really digging digging into technology and I remember taking everything Ben Kinney taught and I. Oh no, did we lose her? All right, <laughs> we lost yeah, her. Yeah. Yeah. so here, here, let me, let me, uh, Mitch, I, or, or yeah, Mitch, I, I see your hand raised. Hold on a second. Let me just ask this by a raise of hands. How many of us in this panel um, were not amazing and didn't like kill it our first year? anybody else can anybody else identify with that yeah and i just want to point that out because sometimes we can put people on stage or on a panel like this and we think they come out of the womb amazing and they sell 100 homes a year and it's like that's not the case guys and i love that when i when i'm in front of folks i'm like just understand like there were bills i didn't pay the first couple of years right before i took bold that was the truth so understand there's a process to this and we don't just nail it right out of the bat so um mitch what were you going to say just a, a slightly different perspective, as Kristen was uh, brand new or relatively new into the business when she was going through the shift, I'd been in the business already 23 years at that point. So I had terrible habits. I mean, horrid. Um, I would hired a coach, Joe Bogar, who really changed the way I looked at things. And then I took bold. And um, I took bold because I knew Diana was the queen of scripts. And what I got was really my life back. Actually, the scripts were great. Getting my life back was more important. And I say that because what she did is she taught me that I had really had to start looking at the market differently. And with the shift coming, my bad habits were not going to get me through the shift. Mm -hmm. My bad mm -hmm. habits, all the things I'd done up to that point, we've heard Gary say that, right? What mm -hmm. got us here today is certainly not going to get us there tomorrow, right? And mm -hmm. so it was that at that moment. So I had to truly look at things differently and say, how was I going to reinvent myself to find the motivated sellers, because I'm not a real big fan of working with buyers. Mm -hmm. um, so I I had to find the motivated sellers. Yeah. And, yeah. and at that point for me, it was short sales. So I immediately yeah. had to become the master of short sales. Well, and, and, and oops, go ahead, Mitch. I'm, I'm no, sorry. no, I was just going to say, it's just really figuring out who you choose to be, start pursuing that, and then use all the tools that we have at our disposal to become that for you. One of yep. them being bold. I mean, I know I'm very self-serving being a bold coach, yet I believe very strongly in that program. Um, and I just took it again as an agent, believe it or not, in addition to coaching it. It's that that good of a thing. But I think we also need to take advantage of the other resources we had, which are the agents that we have in our company who are capable and willing to share. Coaching, yes. without a doubt, has got to be on everybody's list. Everybody's list. I don't care if you're starting at the productivity coaching level, because that's where your production says, and then you move all the way up into mastery and then executive, you need to do that. And then our yeah. events. And it's it's powerful, the tools we have. And using those things is going to make the biggest difference. Well, Mitch, you, you said something really important. You mentioned the word B, right? There's a bold law around that, B do achieve. Correct. Right? And, and, and a lot of us think that we've got to achieve first. I mean, that's kind of what... what um, you know, some of the, the goals and things that we might set. And and like Gene had said, he built up his habits, right? We don't just all mm -hmm. of a sudden do three hours of lead generation right off the bat necessarily. If we can, great. Some of us need to build up to it. We need to be the type of person that will do three hours of lead generation and we can achieve that. And so, you know, I, I, I know that idea of who do you see yourself as? Who are you being? And, you know, Mary Ellen had mentioned, you know, going to certain things like bold, like mega camp. I know when I first went to mega camp in 2009, uh, it, it just blew my mind. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not real different than these folks on stage, you know? And, and so, and that's something really important is having those coaching, uh, those coaching relationships, having a coach, but also making sure you're plugging into the opportunities that are, that are around you. Um, and, and Mitch, I know that you, you coach, 
uh, a lot of uh, top agents at week after week across the U.S. Um, what, how do people, what would be your advice or insight into the, the mindset aspect of things? Like when you talk about who we need to be, um, you know, we talked about mindfulness and exercise and things like that. Um, what advice or input would you have uh, for folks listening about that aspect of the shift and going into it? Okay, so the, the aspect of the B, the mindset part, I think it's about, um, first off, the company you keep. Mm-hmm. I think that's a part of it, right? Who do you hang out with? And I've heard more than one people, Gary, Ben Kinney, um, Jay, saying, you know, we're going to become the average of the five people we hang out with the most. And, and I've read that in multiple books. I think that's 100% true. That's why your parents did not want you hanging out with certain children when you were younger, because they knew what that would bring. It's no different than when you're an adult right? So company you keep. And then what are you putting into that brain of yours? It's a sponge. And even at an, let's just be clear, I'm going to be 58 years old in, in October. I'm older than probably just about anybody good. on this panel, except no. for maybe Gene. I'm not as old as not Gene. Pat. No, just kidding. <laughs> at the same time, you I know, they say, be, brother. <laughs> they say old dogs can't new, learn new tricks. What they don't say is old dogs can't learn new tricks unless they really want to. And if you choose to do so, you can unlearn the stuff that you learned and then relearn or newly learn things that you want. So the mind that is growing is the one that's going to be satisfied. And that's the one that's going to give you the mindset that's going to want you to keep on going. Diana Kokoska is the most voracious learner I know. And she is she reads two or three books a week. And why does she do that? Because the continual learning creates the desire to continue to learn. And it keeps going and going and going. And that's the mindset that we need to have. What, it, what is the number one thing in our six personal perspectives? Does anybody know? The first one is self-mastery. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Self-mastery. It's not about mastery of skill. It's not about mastery of thing. It's mastery of oneself. Who do you choose to be to be the best person you need to be? And it can start as quickly or as um, as long as you want it to be, and it can start as short as reading five pages a day. That's it. Doesn't take much. And so the people in bold who are really, who I see have the greatest mindsets are the ones that accept the fact that one, they can't know it all. Two, they need to be in a pursuit of mastery of themselves. And they do everything they can to remain in that pursuit, which continues to grow their mindset. There you go. Thank you, Mitch. I really appreciate that. And, and don't forget, your brain is a muscle. So when you use it that way, right, it's going to get stronger and stronger. If you don't use it, you'll lose it. So make sure that you're, you're using that. So Erica, I'm coming, coming to you next. Um, I know that, you know, both, both you and I um, have stepped out of production in our teams. And the question I want to ask you specifically is, do you see that changing through this shift, you know, or how will you lean into your team during this time? Well, so I'm actually the team leader, so I don't plan on getting back into production other than helping my agents. But what I have looked at is the numbers on our multi-year trends. And though we are growing and though we have a lot of cappers, of course, the people that are going to need the most assistance is our new agents. And by the way, I had an incredibly insightful and powerful meeting yesterday with 30 of the top 36 people in my market center. And only three of them have been through a shift. Mm -mm. And Mm. so many of them have no idea how to hold an open house, what a great communication plan looks like with their sellers, what it's like to ask for the price reduction in advance. What's a price reduction? I was like, (laughs) right. I was like, oh my gosh, (laughs) I'm so excited because I've actually been doing this since 1991. And I joke like, um, my motivation is that uh, I was a single mom with two kids and I needed to put myself through college. And so uh, I was going to do any and all the things necessary to make sure that I could pay the bills. And I got, and when I graduated, I was like, uh, I just made uh, way more in real estate than I'll ever make with my nursing degree. And 31 years later, I'm still selling real estate. So uh, no, I don't plan on getting back into production, but we don't have a productivity coach per se right now. But what we do have is only one of two bolds in the entire Eastern side of the United States. So we're definitely bringing bold in because that's going to be so important to do that. I have such incredible stories around bold and what it has done for people's lives. And so it was a little nerve wracking because, you know, it's hard to get people in a room live today. So we went ahead and we're going live. 
Um, but I, I think that there's nothing new under the sun and it's the basics, right? Yeah. And if you haven't learned the basics yet, then you need to learn the basics. And yeah. the basics are lead gen, lead follow up, go on appointments, get contracts to close and understand your business, right? And if you can do those things every single day and you have a calendar that matches it, then you'll succeed. Mm -hmm. And you have to, I hear the big why, and I love the big why. I have a big why, no question. And I've known it since I was nine, so I'm lucky. And for me, it's like, this is the career I chose. So I had a really difficult conversation with someone who was very dear to me when the pandemic hit and they went into this like freeze mode right? Like if any of you have ever seen that adorable video of um, Rango, which is one of my favorite cartoons. And there's this like lizard on there that like freezes up. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what's going on? Right. And they're like, I, I'm just, I don't know what to do to help people. And I'm like, okay, you've always been helpful before, but let me help you understand you need to pay your bills. So if you don't make calls to get closings, then your wife is going to sell her car next month. Not you sell your truck. Your wife is going to sell her car. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> all the, all the business happened. Like in that moment, like you can't pay your bills. Now the reality is, is that, um, the wife's car was paid for and I was the wife. So, um, <laughs> my husband got right back into production and did just fine. I, mm. that's the only coaching meeting we've ever had in our entire yeah. relationship, but go. the basics still work. And if our people don't know what the basics are, if you don't know what the basics are, then great news. You're at the company that wrote the book on them. That's right. There you go. There you go. That's awesome. Um, okay. Oh, sorry. Hold on a second. So, um, Steve, what's, uh, what's been Gary telling the top agents these days? Oh my gosh. How much time do you have? <laughs> We've got, uh, what is it, 30 minutes? So yeah, yeah go there. Actually, I do, I do have to be somewhere at noon. Um, you know, it's funny. I um, was 24 years at uh, Cobble Banker, and I'm 10 years now, or maybe it was 25, about 35 years in the business, but about 10 or 11 years here at KW. And ever since I got here, Gary's been talking about a shift, which is crazy, because if I get up every morning and say California is going to have a, an earthquake, eventually I'll look like Nostradamus. But it turns out Gary has now been eventually right. Um, he certainly is encouraging people to trim uh, unnecessary fat and scale back. I've kind of gone the other direction. Um, in addition to our director of operations, we now have an ISA. We're, we're taking on some interns. We're kind of leveling up. Um, we want to make sure we hang on to at least our market share, if not increase it, because I know from, I got the business in 1988, by 1990 or 91, I was selling uh, REOs. So I did about 250 or 300 in that cycle. And I did another almost 300 or 350 REOs uh, in the last cycle. So this will be my third cycle, if indeed that's what the direction we are truly going. And it mm -hmm. tends to look that way. But um you know, Gary's talking about trimming and scaling back, and maybe that's a good idea. I'm not doing it. I'm um, digging down on uh, making sure I'm updated with all my REO contacts. Um, I have uh, do a lot of probate and administration of wills and trusts. I actually just did a little, I don't know, there's no way on this blur background to get these books to show, but I have a little booklet I've, I've, uh, I'm mailing out to attorneys to get more estate sale work. As I like to say, people are dying to work with us. Um, but um, anyway, uh, Gary's, you know, just telling people to hunker down is, is the yeah. short answer the, to the, the long answer I gave you is the short answer is, you know, hunker down and, and get rid of any unnecessary uh, uh, baggage financially. Yeah. Well, and it, it's interesting that, you, you know, you share, share those things, you know, hunkering down especially when it comes to our, our expenses, a lot of agents may not even know exactly what they're spending. All right. So first, like understand what you're spending. Like if you don't have a PL, start tracking that and understand. Got to know, you know your numbers. What, that's right. What, what are you spending? And from there, it's a matter of understanding, you know, what's bringing a return, what may need to be negotiated, what do you need to cut? But you also don't want to cut. I know he said Keith Cunningham on uh, some of those conversations a few times. You don't want to cut to the, the bone. You know, you want to cut the fat and be purposeful about it. And anything that is bringing a return that's feeding your business, you know, especially when you look at the MREA model, you know, it should be bringing a nine to ten to one return, give or take. If it's if it's you know below a six to one return, 
depending on how big your team is, you, or your business is, you may need to consider cutting it. But you know, understand the return you're getting on what you're spending. Every lead gen expense, every expense you have is an employee that should be bringing a return. If it's not, you need to start thinking about changing it or letting it letting it go to industry, so to speak. And so, um, you know, would anybody else? I'm just curious uh, what anybody else would say as far as either you know what they've heard Gary say or how they're preparing their business for this uh, for this shift. Chris, I can tell you something on this. Yeah, John. So listen to these great, I mean, Please. just really super good stuff. So I remember back in the day, the Great Recession, whatever, short sales, foreclosures, all that stuff. Um, and then, then it was kind of flat. We're in a vacation market um, investment place. But what I would tell people is, and I tell my new people this is, you're almost incredibly lucky to be walking into a market that's as hard as it is when you're new, all right? Because you're mostly young, you're mostly hungry, and you mostly have the capabilities to work hard, right? You got the time and capabilities most likely. And if you, because there's a lot of agents been around that are fat and happy that'll fall off. There's a lot of mm -hmm. agents that are out there that are undercapitalized that will fall off. And if you take this as an opportunity to, for what it is, um, the upside can be huge. The rest of your career can be made over these next 12, 24 months. I mean, if you look at this right, if you focus on listings and figure out how to show up every day and outwork everybody else, you're set. You, you can spend mm. these next 12 to 24 months to create a career. Mm. Uh, that. This is an and, unbelievable opportunity. So this was said earlier by Mitch, and I didn't, I didn't expand on that, which is consistency. That consistency is really, really important. Time on task over time, over time. will beat out, will beat out anything. Start and stop, start and stop, all the any day of the week. And so it's really important to make sure that you you jump into that. Now I did see a couple of hands raised. I'm actually going to go to Pat first because she raised her physical hand and hasn't spoken yet. So Pat, what do you got for us? Then I'll go to Erica. Okay, I'm an old broad that's done this for many decades, been through a ridiculous number of shifts. Uh, the one thing I learned back in the dark ages with Coldwell Banker was the head of relocation came in. Learn how to price homes. In other words, you've got to price them based on the competition that's a buyer going to look at not what the house next door is priced at. And so look at bigger. That was big help. Uh, uh, Kristen Cole's statement, keep the sellers happy until something happens. And that can be by calling them on a weekly basis. We had a combination and a statement we made to all of our sellers that bottom line is we're going to talk to you once a week and let you know what's going on. Mm. We also, uh, the absorption rate, learn what that is and what the numbers are in your market. And so those are the big things that I would tell newer agents to learn to do. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Pat. Pricing, so pricing your home, pricing the home is really important and not looking at things, look at things through the buyer's eyes, understanding what they're seeing and how they're seeing it, right? Is a buyer not going to look? If it's all in one big school system, what is available and price it underneath that. That's right. All right. We've got a bunch of hands raised. So Erica, I'm going to go to you next, then we're going to go to Mitch and then Kristen. Well, I loved what you said about understanding your finances. And again, um, I'm actually very not money motivated. So I love being able to make enough money that I don't have to be. <laughs> Maybe that's the wrong way of looking at it. But I'll bring in an agent, whether they're new or whether they're experienced, and I'll say, okay, I need to see your home budget. And eight out of 10 times, they don't have one. So we're going to start there. Like we actually pay $300 a month and we have Dave Ramsey who provides his website to all of our agents. And it's not something I'm willing to cut right? But I am willing to cut. I'll even reuse my paper plate twice. I am, I like to refer to myself as high class, cheap ass. Like I don't spend money and neither does the market center. It better have a nine to one return. 
So I'll say, okay, well, let's get your budget in place, right? Like, and let's be realistic about a budget. And I'm very good with budgets. So I can be like, okay, where's the cable bill? When do you guys eat out? Where's your coffee in here, right? Like, get, let's get real right with numbers and then i'm like let's look at your business and let's make sure there's a return on investment and then we just do what we basically do i don't remember then it's the financial model where i just back in like how much money do you have to make to pay your bills so that you don't have to go get a job somewhere else next year it's nine homes great it might be 19 homes great this is what you have to do and then we just back them into the simplicity of how many calls do you have to make to go on this many appointments to get this many closings and we have a system and model for it. We don't have to make it fancy and you give them clarity and then they know every single day. And then you put them in a group or you get them on a call, you stick them out in the bullpen and you're like, okay, how many appointments do you have to go on to hit your goals this week so you can pay your bills, right? Sometimes I'll bring in like McDonald's and say, who's gonna be working here next week, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like in all love, like, do you want to make your calls or do you want to flip a burger for me? Like, which one do you want? Cause they actually pay pretty well. It's like 20 bucks an hour and you're making less than that. So you don't actually get the right to keep this job unless you make more than minimum wage. And this is what it looks like. And then we're like, what would it look like at the end of the year? If you were happy that you kept this job. And if it was nine to pay your bills, it's probably 25 to, you know, plan the vacation. And we'll put up there, like, what do you want? How much money do you want to give? Do you want to take the family on a vacation? Are you saving for a new car? Like what would be like the reward? Cause I'm very motivated in like risk reward. That's where I get motivated. I don't like to clean my house. So if I'm going to clean my house, it's going to be for 30 minutes at a time and I'm going to get 30 minute break, right? I don't like the lead gen. Okay, well then I'm going to do it for 45 minutes and then I'm going to take a break. For me, it's results oriented. So I always say you get to stop lead generating when you've made two appointments. And if that takes you all day, then I'll see you for lunch, right? Mm. But get them a plan of action, like, and then also provide the scripts necessary. And that's what a lot of people are asking for me right now is like, what are the scripts? What are the talking points? What are the conversations that we need to have? And that is a skill base. But I love one of the things that my husband talked about on lead gen shift tactic number three. I was, I was expecting something profound because we actually don't talk much about business. And he was like, the only profound thing I do is I get up every day and I do it. He's like, that's it. He's like, sometimes I get off the phone and I'm like, boy, I sounded like an idiot, but I made the call. Right. And it's like, you know, the old adage, like you got a talented kid who throws 10 free throws every single week. And then you've got someone who has no skill at all. And they're practicing five hours a day the end of the year, one of them is going to be better. And we all know who it is. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Erica. I love that consistency, cr uh, create a plan for action. Don't stop lead generating until you get two appointments. All right. Got a few more questions. I actually want to get to before the end of today and Mitch and Kristen, you guys have raised your hand. So you guys go ahead and then uh, I'm going to hear, we're going to go to Aaron, um, Valerie and Megan for another question, but you guys go first. I was just going to bring up that we're all talking wonderful things about what we've done or what have you. Uh, maybe it'd be a good idea to share some of the places where we screwed the pooch, where we made mistakes. Yeah. I mean, frankly, my making the mistake was not really creating a database that was worth a darn, meaning I didn't have really mm. great relationships and was not staying in touch. Had I done that at the times when I was doing 250, 300 transactions, how many, how much more business would we have gotten? And then there's plenty that I did stay in touch with. I mean, we just listed a house that we'd been in touch with a person for a year and sold one we uh, we were in touch with who bought our listing, stayed in touch with him, and he sold it again with us. There's great things that you could say you did well, yet where do you make mistakes? I made a lot of mistakes by not being in great relationship with the people in my database. And that's the simplest things to do. The simplest, mm. easiest relationship to continue to build. So mm. I would say, Love if that, anything, man. don't learn from my mistake. Don't do what right. I did. So build a database and communicate it with it consistently, right? Yeah. And we have all the tools yeah. for it. <laughs> Command is a beauty. Yes, do. yes it is. All right, Amen. Kristen, you're up. Amen. Amen. Say it again. <laughs> Command is so, a beauty. I I was I'm right with you, Erica, on being frugal. And I didn't see any reason to pay for something that KW 
provides for free. So I was all into E-Edge and command and everything when they, Mitch knows, he's been my bold coach, he knows. And, um, but one, I want to piggyback on the relationships. That is what I'm building. That is what I'm working on and focusing on this shift. And I'm super excited because this next Tuesday, I'm having my summer um, client event. And I went out because I couldn't find one of these to rent. I bought a soft serve ice cream machine and I am giving out ice cream cones at my client event. And, and, but the whole point of it is I then want to be able to go to clients events that are their own and pull, pull ice cream for them and tell them that this, because you use me, this is a benefit. If get the ice cream mix and stuff, I'll come and I'll do ice cream for you for an hour. Just find something. I'd like to think out of the box, find something that that meets you and your strengths picking up the phone for i'm i'm with eric or gene excuse me i can't it's it's painful to Mm. to be hours and hours and hours but i'd have a ball being able to pull ice cream and people know hey you're a you're a real estate broker what are they going to do they're going to stand there and they're waiting for their ice cream cone whether the ice cream is freezing or it's just their turn so Mm. That's cool. I appreciate you sharing that. Um, so I'm going to go to uh, Aaron, Megan, and, and Valerie. And here's the question I want to uh, hear from you guys. And then if there's any other, uh, anything else that you've been dying to share with us, I would love to hear from you. Um, but I've heard Gary ask, is it about having a great year in real estate or a great career? And you know, what advice can you share with us on how to ensure we focus on the long term and a, a great career instead of just the pressure of one great year? So um, I'm going to go, let's go with Valerie first, and we'll go Megan and Aaron. We'll, we'll wrap up on that question with you. Okay. Um, well, a, a great year doesn't make for a great career. I'm 14 years in. I started in 2008, um, and I was very blessed to have been picked up as a buyer's agent by one of the top REO guys in town. So, you know, right out of the gate, first year, I sold 14 houses without doing anything. Um, and once I realized I needed to do something, I, I wasn't at Keller yet. So I hired a Buffini coach. Um, and what I, I tell all the mentees in my office is, I, I don't know, I like food with my meals, <laughs> you know, and, and that's what drives me, you know, and I got in trouble actually after I came to Keller because I um, didn't have the REO leads anymore and then ended up with um, no leads. And I had to go back and rebuild um, those relationships that I had. And as it turns out, I got in the business, I came from the title insurance business. Uh, I took, I, I did have a Buffini coach, but I took uh, bold with Mitch. And I, mm-hmm. I, yeah, and I believe I was one of the, one of your conversions. And that's when I got my maps coach. Um, and I've had maps coaching ever since, which, you know, I, I, I'm like, Gene, I can BS a coach with the best of them. It's like, don't, ask, you know, don't ask a, somebody that bullshits to not bullshit. Cause that's what we do. <laughs> and, and uh, <laughs> um, however, uh, I finally got a coach that wouldn't, by my nonsense. Um, and one of my big things was that the business came so, so easily. All I have to do is call a couple of people and I don't even need to ask for a business. That's the thing. I, I, I can actually just call and say, Hey Mitch, how you doing? I was thinking about you. I'm going to, I'm heading your way or, you know, tomorrow you got time to grab coffee or a beer or something like that, you know, and they go, no, you know, I'm really busy. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll call you next time in the area, but I'm really thinking about your business has been really good. I'm heading your way. Um, I got a couple of houses coming on or whatever, you know, and I just, you know, and that's where I pick them up, you know, but, but the thing is, it's like, you never know when you're going to be caught flat footed. In my case, it wasn't 2008, it was 2011. And I almost Mm. lost my house in 2011. I was five months behind. And I just, you know, I told myself that there's a lot of people out there that could sell a house that don't have the skill I have. And I just need to put put my head down and uh, going back to what we were talking about earlier, um, do the basics very well. And I got that from Bill Parcells in the 1990 New York Giants. And of course, Phil Sims went down and their backup quarterback won the Super Bowl. And they asked him how they did it. And they said they did the 
basics very well. And I always remember that is just go back to the basics and do it very well. Um, mm -hmm. And like Mary Ellen, I, I, I have a deep sports background um, and I hold a whole bunch of powerlifting records. Um, and I do not do a personal best every time I go in the gym, but I go in the gym five times a week, every week, no matter what. And sometimes, you know, the bar wins and sometimes I win depending on what we're supposed to be doing that. But time over task has made me a world champion. So time over mm. task in real estate is the exact same thing. It makes you a champion. Um, mm. So it's a matter of doing those basics very well repeatedly. Oh my gosh. I'm so glad you just said that, Valerie. Thank you for sharing that. I love what you said. Time on task will make you a world champion. Pin that, put that somewhere because that's going to like, that's it, I can leave now. You know, time yeah. on task will make you, uh, will make you a world champion. So um, now Megan or Aaron, I'm not sure how you follow that up, but uh, Megan, I think you wanted to share a few things and then we'll go to Aaron. Hi, sure. Um, I really just, I know it'll be wrapping up shortly and I really just wanted to kind of say, I, I work with Olivia on a daily basis and my experience in the real estate world has just been within the last year and the amount of knowledge and just growing um, that I have learned in the last year has been great. And it's just been kind of finding my direction, but watching her coach people and watching her and the clients and just what she brings to people and the changes that are made. I just wanted to make sure before this call ended, just to say um, how appreciative of this call and these experiences and this knowledge and um, just being able to learn more and staying. Um, before this call, we were kind of having a conversation and um, with someone and it was just, you know, that reminder to no matter what level you get to, to stay teachable. And that has stuck with me this whole time, like going through this whole call. And it's just, all, you know, that reminder to always stay teachable. And I watch a lot of you, you don't necessarily say it, but you don't have to. It's, re it's remaining open-minded and always being teachable. But I did, I just wanted to say on this call how appreciative and I was very excited to get on here and kind of watch watch this happen and watch everybody just kind of put their ideas and their perspective and their thoughts together. Yeah. And I appreciate you sharing that, Megan, and you're helping facilitate this and, you know, watching, you know, Olivia do her thing and seeing how important coachability is. And, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Valerie had also shared, you know, finding a coach that won't let you BS. Right. And so making sure that you have that partner, because at MAPS, that's what we are. We're your business partner to make sure that we don't let you BS yourself out of success and to fight for your best version of yourself. And so, Aaron, as a MAPS coach, um, you know, how would you answer that question I said earlier about making sure that you have a great career, not just a great year? And, you know, maybe you can speak to, you know, that need for a coach and, and what people do to take that next step to find a coach. Yeah, absolutely. Not only am I a coach, but I also am a practitioner. I mean, I own a um, level six real estate team that over the past four years I've built um, from the ground up. And this year we're on pace for over hundred million in sales volume in five different locations. And the, the way we've done this, you guys, is truly by having a relationship with our, our numbers. And one of, the, one of the best things of advice that I was given early on is um, to build a relationship with something or someone, you have to spend time with it. Gary recently said, said love is spelled T-I-M-E. And there's a lot of truth to that. If you're going to choose to avoid spending time with your data, whether it's financials or your, your metrics, you're not going to have a relationship with them that's long lasting. Uh, one of the things that's super important to track and measure is, like everybody has said, the number of conversations you're choosing to have each day. Those contacts, this is a contact sport. If you want to sell real estate and not talk to people, you're out of your mind. Mm -hmm. it, it just does not work very well. Uh, I don't know any mega, mega producers that don't do it. Our organization year to date, 6,401 conversations, which has identified 358 opportunity appointments into our business. And we've closed and pended 118 houses. Okay. 
understand, are we proud of the conversion metrics? Some days, right? And those numbers create the opportunities in which what we get to say, what could we do differently to get a better outcome or a different outcome? And though we understand that leading measure, if it's not being done, the odds of everything else showing up are slim to none, right? So we are hyper, hyper diligent and aware of what that daily action is being done. Um, and I think that one of the best things of advice as agents walking into a shifting market, which is where I began 2008, same difference. I didn't know any different. It was the person, this is belly to belly, face to face. The person with the most contacts is going to always win this game. And so to set yourself up for a great career, go have as many contacts, business contacts, where you're asking an opportunity of, are you a buyer, seller, or investor right now? If the answer is no, who do you know that's looking to buy, sell, or invest right now? Okay. Those are, it's very simple. I mean, you can ask other ways, though you got to identify that. Or, hey, do you have a real estate agent that you refer to if you hear of people looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate? If the answer is no, would you be offended if I became that guy and stayed in contact with you forever? Right? Like, it's not that difficult. Our database today is 28,000 strong. Right. It's taken 14 years to build it up. It doesn't happen overnight. And consistently you see growth in the business. Mm -hmm. right. I, I appreciate that, Aaron. Sorry. Were you done? Yep. And one last thing, actually, Chris. Yeah. Keep in mind that um, selling is not telling. And so many people get caught up with just blah, blah, blah. -ing. Remember that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And so when people are asking questions out touring properties or giving opinions on their properties or what they're looking to, to pursue, when they ask, you know, tell me, what do you think about this? Just reverse it and ask a great question. Tell me what you think about it before I give you my opinion, mm -hmm. right? What is it that you love about it? What is it that you don't love about it? Are these things that you could see yourself fixing? Stop just inserting your own judgment which causes them to back off, ask better questions. Amen. Amen. All hey, Chris, right. So can, I ask, can I ask you a quick question for the whole you group? Because sure um, what, what you mentioned, Aaron, struck me as interesting. It don't happen overnight. Are we all in agreement on this? This is time on task over a long time. The longer, the better. You come into this, think your, your first week, your first month, your first year is going to be magic. Maybe. But if you build a career, build a career and you will be fine, is what I would tell folks. Amen. Amen. All right. We are almost out of time. And, and I want to hear from all y'all before we go, like really quickly, what is one thing you do on the daily that gives you the success that you're looking for, especially in light of the shift? And I know we've said, go back to basics. We said, know your numbers, get a coach, all that stuff. Maybe that's your answer. However, you know, I would love to uh, love to hear from everyone um, quickly. What is that one thing that you're doing right now that you know is going to give you the success you're looking for, despite any changes in a market? I think the one thing that I focus on in my success is I choose the story I tell myself in my head. I don't ever let it tell me. Mm, I choose the story. I choose my story. I love that. Thank you, Erica. Start the day prior by establishing tomorrow's goals and commitments. Right. So wake up knowing this is what I'm going to execute. And in our organization, for most people's goals to be met, it is 20 voice to voice conversations. So establish your commitment and run towards it the next day. Love it. Who's next? Mine is um, connecting with people and giving them education and value on the market and just really connecting and building that relationship. 40 contacts per day. We're doubling down now. Mm, that's interesting. I love that. All right. Who's next? I'll jump in there. Uh, you know, we started this in COVID and we've continued it as a team every day. We meet uh, for 30 minutes and we share our wins and then we go into scripting for whatever, uh, any objections that came in the day, the day prior. Any, and then, so we're looking, the buyer agents with the listing agents and the ISAs, everybody hears what's going on daily. Like, what was the response to this? Why did this deal fall apart? Why did you get an offer on that property? Uh, and so we script around that daily. I mean, it's, it's the market's changing so fast. Um, and so it's just keeping everybody on the team um, focused on how we can best help people 
by knowing uh, what's happening on the buyer side of the business and what's happening on the seller side of the business. Awesome. All right, who's next? I'll jump in. Um, I, I... Oh, you're breaking up. You're breaking up. All right, let's go to somebody else. We're low on time. So, Pat, why don't you go next? Set a schedule and actually look at it and follow it. What are we looking at and following again, Pat? Say that one more time. Our calendar and schedule. Thank you. If it's not in your schedule, it doesn't exist, right? All right, who's next? I was going to say the same thing. Following the recipe that you put onto your schedule. If, if you can commit to following the lead or the, the time blocks that you have in your schedule and without variation, everything else gets magical because all the time you thought you didn't have is going to show up at the end of the day. Awesome. Kristen, we'll go to you and then Steve will try you one more time. Kristen, go ahead. Yeah, I am just good. one of the things I do is I have a meeting with my virtual assistant every single day where I am say focusing on here's what's going on and then staying communication. Communication is the key for me. Awesome. All right, Steve. You guys hear me? Yeah, go ahead. All right, cool. I sorry, I transitioned from Wi-Fi in the office to the car, which is not always smooth. Okay. Um, I think you know. I, I will echo what everybody's been saying specific to conversations, right? It, this whole business is conversations. If you can't have conversations, you're not going to have business. It's that simple, but you've got to shift proof the business. We've got to double down on, you know, estate sales, divorce sales, REO, all the things that are going to continue to happen in our business, irrespective of what the market's doing, right? All that business keeps happening. Hmm. So, it's just a matter of, of getting back to basics, making the calls, having the conversations, but really focusing on a sort of high volume business that doesn't go away, that's shift proof. Awesome, thank you, Steve. All right, I don't think we heard from Valerie and then anybody else, last call. Actually, this is really simple and silly. Uh, and this is just a little above and beyond that I do. I make sure seven days a week, I make birthday calls. I don't do Facebook. I don't do um, the, unless they're somebody I, I never talked to on the phone. Cause some of the millennials, they don't, they won't pick up the phone. So don't bother, yeah. but, sure. and they won't listen to your message. So just don't bother. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, I make birthday calls seven days a week to anybody that is in my database who had a birthday that day. I make sure I wish them a happy birthday. Hey, that's wonderful. All right. I'll give you one, it, one last one. Have yes, a plan. Do not wing it. There you go. All right. So I'll just throw this in there, guys. Here it is. Make sure that you're studying this book. Get in a book club. Look over it. Implement what you read here. It's been written. You don't need anything new. Thank you, Gene. All right. So make sure this is uh, something you're, you're looking into, you know, whether your business or your market is in a shift right now or it's going to be in a shift. Look at those numbers for the market. Know that uh, you know what's going on. There's been a ton of amazing information um, here. And I see Gene put his uh, email in there. So if you guys want to email him, ask him questions, whatever it is, that's wonderful. I have a great deal of respect for all y'all's time. So uh, we started on time, we're ending on time. Listen, go out and be your amazing selves. And remember, we can do the hard things. Get better at doing hard. That's one of the amazing things that, uh, you know, if you do that, nothing's going to stop you. Um, and it's not going to get easier. So uh, just let's get better at doing hard. Thank you guys for being here. Wonderful to see everybody. Thank you for contributing, everybody on the panel. Goodbye and God bless. We'll see you guys later. Go help somebody. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Bye, everybody. Thanks for having me. See you all. Thank you. Bye, Bye guys.